Let's move on to some psychology. So this question asks, if two stimuli, an electric shock and a light flash, are simultaneously given to a planarian flatworm, a response develops that eventually can be evoked when only the light flash is used. This result can be called conditioning if the response does what? Okay, so the classic example of uh, conditioning involves Pavlov's dogs. And the setup goes that uh, we have a dog that normally salivates to an unconditioned stimulus, which for instance could be a steak. Okay, so that, that dog will salivate to the steak reflexively, doesn't need to think about it, or doesn't need to learn about it, it just does it. That's just an innate response. Okay, so, but what we realize is that if you pair that unconditioned stimulus with a neutral stimulus, so that neutral stimulus could be a bell, for instance, the sound of a bell. So if you, if you present the steak with the ding of a bell enough times, eventually the dog will salivate to the ding without the steak even being there. So the dog learns to associate those things, those things together and, it'll, and the dog will salivate um, in anticipation of getting the steak. But you don't even need to give the dog the steak for it to salivate. So that neutral stimulus, which normally didn't evoke a response in the dog, you know, the dog doesn't originally care about the sound of the bell. It doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't ring a bell in the dog's head, right? It just doesn't, doesn't even associate that with anything. Um, eventually becomes a conditioned stimulus in which the dog knows that that bell is associated with the steak. So it will begin to salivate. Um, and then that salivation to that conditioned stimulus is called a conditioned response. So that's just some terminology. Okay. So in this case, it looks like the electric shock um, most likely is that unconditioned stimulus. Um, and it's probably eliciting pain, a pain response in the planarian flatworm, right? That's, you don't have to teach something to not like an electric shock, right? When we're um, conditioning mice in the lab, for instance, uh, we use electric shocks in some uh, scenarios, and that's we don't, because we don't have to teach. We use that shock actually to teach other behaviors or other, uh, elicit other responses. So that's not something that the, the animal needs to learn um, in order to feel pain, right? So, and then it looks like we're, we're associating that shock with a light flash. So now um, every time that planarian gets that light flash, it's gonna you know, do the same, most likely this, this pain aversion response, okay? So, um, all right, so let's, let's go to the answers. A says, um, can no, no longer be elicited by the electric shock. That would be really weird, right? Um, that means that the planarian flatworm no longer uh, you know, feels pain due to electric shock, that'd be, you know, that's not conditioning. That's just something weird. Okay, so we're going to strike A out. B is also elicited by other dissimilar stimuli. So this is actually a very interesting um, answer choice. Um, and the reason why it's interesting is because it kind of, um, uh, is associated with an experiment that was done, um, and a psychology experiment that was done in the past. Um, and this is called the Little Albert experiment. And essentially in this experiment, um, there was a subject named Little Albert. I think he was actually a child, so you know that rings a lot of uh, um, issues with whether or not that was ethical at all. And I think they paired um, a loud sound with uh, something white. I'm not exactly, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something white, um, like the white, the color white. And so... Um, and they did it enough times where that the child actually generalized that response to anything that was white. So initially the experiment was done with one thing that was white. I think it might have been a mouse. Um, the, the child was initially feared of mice and then they paired that loud sound with the mice. Um, you know, that, that just scared him, right? Um, and, then, and then the child was, was scared of everything that was white, um, including like a man's beard, I think. So, um, so, but the whole point of generalization is that it has to be um, generalized in so that uh, it's two stimuli that are sufficiently similar to each other. So in the little Albert experiment, it was two things that were white, right? So um, that would be weird if it started to elicit responses to things that were dissimilar, right? That's that's not the, the whole point of the conditioning. So I think we can strike B out. Um, C says, is no longer elicited by both stimuli together. Um, again, if you, if you have the electric shock 
we're supposed to get that response. So um, that's kind of like including A again, um, but A was wrong, so C is also wrong. Um, and D says, is not a response originally evoked by light flash alone. Um, and that's true, right? So that bell, like I said, um, initially doesn't evoke a response from the dog. It's a neutral stimulus. You need a neutral stimulus in, in order to condition it, right? If it, was, um, if, if it was not a neutral stimulus, if it was a stimulus that evoked another response, then it's going to be very difficult, maybe even impossible to pair those two things together, right? So you can take something that's neutral and you can convert it into a conditioned stimulus, um, and that's the whole point of conditioning. So we're going to choose D as our answer.